Hey guys, it's Charlotte back with another video. In this video, we are going to be learning how to weather a 60 foot double door box car. So go ahead and get ready to follow along. Okay, so as you can see in this video, we are going to be doing our Chesty System CNO box car. This box car I got from a friend of mine. They had already started to do some weathering on it. So you'll be able to kind of see here as I'm pointing out that there is a little bit of a wash on it. There has been some rust spots started on the roof of it. So if you see that in the video, that was my friend, they had started it, but we're gonna go ahead and do the full on weathering job on this one. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and start with our fade here. We're doing our 50-50 mix of our 50% isopropyl alcohol and our Mission Models light gray paint. I just grabbed some coffee stirs at the store so that I could stir my paint together more easily. So you want to make sure and mix it up really well. The consistency should be about what milk would look like when you're finished. Now when spraying the car, you want to make sure to start and stop your spray off of the box car. That way you're not getting too much paint built up on the ends. And you want to make sure it can go over with an even spray. And try to change up your angles a little bit. That way you're not getting any shadowing, especially on the grab irons. Now you can go over your car as little or as much as you need to. Depending on your prototype picture, you might want to do a few extra coats or you might just do a couple if it's not super faded. Once finished with the fade, we're going to go ahead and move on to our powders. So to start off with, we're just going to make the backing for our streaking. So I'm going to start out using our dark rust powder. Now the prototype that I used for my box car, it had a couple of, just a couple of streak lines on it. They were larger and longer. So that's what I'm starting with for the backing here is those streaks. Now we're going to go ahead and do a quick coat of dull coat. This is going to seal in the powders that we just laid down on our car. And I used Mr. Super Clear Matte for my dull coat here. You can use whatever you have on hand or if you have a preference for your dull coat. Next we are going to work on our streaking. 
So I have some odorless thinner here and some raw umber oil paint. We're gonna start out using a thin wide brush and we're going to go ahead and dip that in our odorless thinner. And then you wanna dab it off on a paper towel just to get most of that moisture out. And then we'll start by laying down a thin coat of that thinner where we want our streak at on our box car. Now this thinner performs as a base to help us more smoothly lay our line down on the car. And at the top of the car, where we want our rust streak to start at, we will use our oil paint and we're just gonna put some dabs of that oil paint at the top. Then we'll go back and using that same brush that we started with the thinner on, we're gonna dip that in the thinner once again, dab that off on a paper towel, and then we're gonna slowly start at the top and pull that oil paint down. So with this car, I decided I did not prefer to have that dark umber color to be my starting color for my streaks. So I started over using some light rust oil paint instead. Now, depending on how dark and how long you want your streaks to be, if you press a little bit harder with your brush, you're gonna have darker, longer streaks. If you want them to be a little bit lighter and a little bit shorter, you can kind of feather your brush a little bit. That way it's not so dark and your streak ends a little bit more quickly. So as you can see, those light rust streaks turned out a lot better. I prefer that color over that dark umber to start our streaks with. But depending on your car and your preference, you can use the dark umber or the light rust color, whichever you prefer. Once again, we'll be putting that dot of oil paint there at the top. This streak was a little bit of a thicker streak, so I used a larger dot of paint, kind of spread it along the top a little bit. That way it started out thicker for me. And as you can see here, my streak wasn't just the way that I wanted it, so I went ahead and went back with some thinner, cleaned it up a little bit. The nice thing about using this method is that if you do make a mistake, maybe your hand goes to the side a little bit. I know it's kind of hard to get perfectly straight down streaks. If you mess up, you can always go back with thinner and wipe off what you have, let it dry, and then go ahead and try to do your streaks again. I do apologize, it's a little bit hard to see when the thinner is on the car just because it gives off a little bit of a glare. It was kind of difficult to get the lighting just right so that it would be bright enough that you guys could easily see what I was doing, but 
not have a glare on it. And you can always go back and either using a Q-tip or a micro brush applicator. You can fix up those spots if you do make a mistake. Not a big deal at all. And then we're just going to go ahead and repeat on the other side of the car. Now once again I used that light rust oil paint and I just touched up the top of the car kind of creating an area of what the wound would be at where you would have your rust kind of streaking down from. And then we'll just repeat that same process of doing those touch-ups, creating a more significant area for that wound, that starting place for our rust streaks on the other end of the car, and then we'll flip it over and repeat that on the other side. We're going to go back in with our raw umber oil paint and we're going to create a little more depth with our streaks. So with these streaks I did not do a base layer of thinner just because I didn't want to wash away the streak that I already had there. I started out with just doing that dot of oil at the top, but I still went back in with my wide flat brush dipped in thinner and I pulled that streak down. I just wanted to create a little more depth and texture for my streaks. And then we'll go ahead and repeat the process on the other end of the car. And then we'll flip the car over and again repeat on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
Now we'll go back to using our light rust oil paint and we're just going to create some rust spots on the doors. Now with these you can start out doing a little dot there where you want your streak to start at and then just pull it down and just do a little line with a thin tip brush. Now with this I just did a spot of my paint and then I took a fan brush that was completely dry and I just ran that down just to create that little bit of streak. And then we'll go back with our dark umber oil paint and we're just going to darken up that spot where the wound would have started both on our spots of rust along the sides of the car and then on our doors.
Now while I had that raw umber oil paint out, I went ahead and did some touch-ups on the streaks on this end. Just to make those starting areas kind of where that wound is at just a little bit darker and a little bit more realistic. I wanted to give it a little bit more texture than what was there before. I think one lesson that I did learn with doing this car was not to lay my oil paints on quite so thickly. Drying time was horrendous for it. So in the future I will probably go back with acrylic paints instead of oil paints to kind of darken up those wound areas since they do dry a little bit faster. So just keep that in mind if you are using oil paints that if you lay it on a little bit thicker with your layering it's going to take a lot longer for it to dry. But as you can see, going back with the layers, it gives it a lot better texture and depth. And then I went ahead and continued with that raw umber and I just went back and again did a couple of spots of that rust, this time with that darker paint. Gives the car a little bit more variation when you use the different colors of paint. Repeat that same process on the other end and then we'll flip the car over and repeat that process on the other side. Now my prototype picture, it had quite a bit of rust around the handrails. So as you can see here, I'm just adding some rust in. It's best to do this with a fine tip brush, something a little bit smaller. That way you can work around your handrails without getting your rust colors on those. Go ahead and go in with our light rust color on the ends and we're just gonna create a few rust spots on the ends using our dab of oil paint and then we'll go in with that dry fan brush and we're just going to brush that down to make our streak and then we can go back in and touch it up a little bit maybe use some of that raw umber just to make it look like it's bleeding a little bit more from that wound area where the rust has started After I created my couple of streaks there on the end, I went back and just did some extra spots of rust with my dark umber color. So as I had said previously, I layered my oil paint a little bit heavy so it took quite a while for it to dry. My tip for myself and you guys for the future would be either A, not layer the oils on as thickly, or B, instead of doing the oil paints, go back over with acrylics instead of oil to kind of give that texture and that depth to your darting rust spots that you have at the top. Many unbearable hours later. Alrighty, so after our rust spots with the oils had dried, 
we went back in with our powders. Now we're going to use our dark rust powder and we're going to go back over our streaks that we had done just to kind of touch that up, give it a little bit more color, a little more depth and texture. So with the streaks this time around, I did focus more on doing layers. That was a request that I had had in previous videos just to do a little bit more layers, try to make it a little bit more realistic with my streaking. my light rust powder again doing some layers going back over my dark rust powders that I had giving it a little more color variation a little more texture a little bit more depth of course continue to reference your prototype photo that you have to try to get your color variations close to what you have in the photo continued on with that light rust powder on our door and on our other end. After I had used my rust powders, I did go back over with a little bit thicker dry clean brush just to kind of brush away that excess powder that I had there, make it a little bit more of clean lined look. We're also going to go back in and use some dark rail brown again to add a little bit more color variation. My rust streaks were pretty dark on my car, so I wanted to give some more color variation and darken them up a little bit. And again, going in with that dry, thicker brush, brushing away the excess powder. Ed, and we'll repeat that same process with the powders on the opposite side. So I found a bit of a different way to mimic rust on the car and I wanted to utilize it in this video. So this is going to be a brand new way to do this for us. Now first off, you want to go ahead and we'll start with some Testures Gloss Coat. And then we're going to grab some of our Dark Rust Powder. Now if you have a mixing tray, we'll just take a little scoop of our Dark Rust Powder. And we're going to scoop it into our mixing tray. Now if you have an eyedropper, that would be perfect to utilize to put your gloss coat in. 
That way you can control a little bit more easily how much you're putting in. But we're just gonna take a couple of drops of that tester's gloss coat and we're gonna add it into our dark rust powder. We'll just go ahead and we're gonna mix this up and it's gonna create kind of a thicker consistency it's a little bit thicker than paint and a little bit more textured than a paint would be I really like using this method it's a new method for me but I loved the results with it Once you have that mixed into a nice consistency, it should be a little bit thicker than paint. It's gonna be more textured and kind of a gritty substance. So we're gonna go ahead and use this as a mimic to rust that you would see on cars. It's gonna give us more texture. Again, we're going back and we're doing layers here. So we're gonna use that at the wound, the start points of where our rust would have started at. Now keep in mind, as this is a little bit thicker than just using a regular paint, you're gonna wanna make sure and keep it thinner along the door channels, that way our doors can open and close properly without getting stuck on that textured surface. that process along both sides of the car just going back over those areas where it's kind of got that wound where the start of the rust was at Now using our oil paints once again, I started out with my light rust color, just adding a little color variation in that textured rust that I added, and then I did go back in kind of mixing in with some of that dark umber color of that oil paint, just to add that color variation, make it look a little bit more realistic. And we'll do that along both sides of the car, kind of bringing out our rust streaks a little bit more. Of course, referencing your prototype picture, making sure you have that accurate. So again, so we had not finished up the ends yet, so I went ahead and went back in with those powders, once again creating that depth and texture, and then using that thicker wide brush to kind of brush the excess dust off that we had on there. And as you can see from my poor camera skills, I'm not the best at holding the ends up in the middle of the camera, so I apologize. 
for my sad camera abilities there. All right, and then after we added that paint again with the layers, I went back in and added a little bit more of our dust powders to it. So again, we used our dark rust color and our light rust color to do some variations there. And then going back in with our wide, thicker brush, dusting off the extra. Okay, then we went back in with our dark real brown powder. So I started using a new technique here with my stipple brush. So we're gonna go ahead, get some powder on our brush, and then we're gonna dust it off as to not get too much powder on the brush. So you wanna use a rag or some paper towels just to brush that excess dust off. Now we're gonna go in with our steeple brush and we're just gonna add some road grime there at the bottom along the edge of the car. making sure to get some of that road grime along the bottom of our doors and kind of where they're handled at more. And then we'll continue on and do the bottom of our car where we'd have a lot of that road grime coming up and sticking. Remember when doing powders, a lot of the powder is going to come off when you do your dull coat and you spray that on. So you might want to go a little bit heavier, but it's always best to build your layers and not go too crazy with it. You can always add more later, but it's harder to take it off. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go ahead and we'll start on our roof. So we're gonna use Tamiya masking tape and we're just gonna mask off the sides of our car. That way we don't get any overspray when spraying the top. Now for the top, we're gonna use Mission Models Rail Tie Brown. 
So the mission model's paint is already ready to go. As far as using the airbrush, you don't need to thin it out or anything when you're just doing the straight color on the car. So we're gonna go ahead and do our passes, making sure to start and stop the airbrush off the car as to not have excess buildup towards the ends of the car. And again, make sure you're going at it from different angles, that way you get all the little nooks and crannies. You want to make sure you have a nice even coat of paint. Go ahead and remove the masking tape so now we have a nice brown color as our base for our roof. I went back and masked off the end of the panels of the roof because I wanted to remove the brown paint and make them look like they've been replaced. I used my Tamiya masking tape again. So we're going to grab our odorless thinner and using a q-tip we're just going to go over that brown portion and pull that off. That way our end panels will be silver just like they had been replaced. smarter thing would have been to mask these areas off before I had started coloring the roof brown, but say la vie. Now we're going to go in with our powders. So we'll use our dark rust powder and we're just going to kind of create not necessarily a specific pattern but just kind of go in here and there with that dark rust to create a little bit of color variation. So just some areas we're going to completely cover with that dark rust color, some areas we're going to go a little bit lighter with. Once again, we're going to go in and we're going to use that kind of textured rust that we did before. We'll just go through and just kind of create some spots where the rust would be a little bit thicker 
not any specific pattern to this. So for my prototype pictures, on those end panels that had been replaced, they did have some rust spots on them. So I used my Mission Models Standard Rust, and I went back in and I just added a little bit of rust spots there. I used my light rust powder and went back over those rust spots just to make it look like it had a little bit more texture to it. And then we went back in with our dark rail brown powder again to create some color variation there in the end after using our light rust powder. Just gives it a little bit dirtier of a look. So on the roof we're also going to use our light rust and our dark rail brown and we're just going to do a variation of the rusty colors like it's been in use for a while. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and hop on over and start on the wheels. 
So off video, I did use Rust-Oleum Camouflage Spray Paint just to give a nice good brown base color for the wheels. And then we came back in and using our Dark Rust Powder and our Dark Rail Brown Powder, we did a little bit of color variation, adding both of those into the wheels to make it look more realistic. So we'll repeat that on both sides. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and add powders to our trucks. So just like the wheels, we went ahead and sprayed those with a layer of Rust-Oleum Camouflage Spray Paint just to get a good brown base layer. Now with the trucks, we started out using our dark rust powder just to add a little bit of rust onto them. The trucks for my prototype weren't too rusty, they were more brown, so I just added a little bit of rust and then I went back in with my dark rail brown and added that powder on as well. And again, we'll repeat that on the other side of the truck and then do the same with our other truck. Now we're just gonna pop our wheels back into our truck and then we're gonna go ahead and screw those back into our car. Alrighty guys, so this is our finished project. So I think my biggest takeaway from this one was a lot of learning with the oil paints. So unless you have a lot of time to let it dry, I would recommend either not going so heavy on the layers of oil paints, or instead of using oil paints, we'll go back and use acrylics at the top instead. I really enjoyed this project though. I think that it turned out great. I'm really happy with my end result. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. As always, if you guys have any tips or tricks for me, you can leave those in the comments. Share, like, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.